a popular video a little while ago was this very simple two transistor CW transmitter. It was VXO controlled and operates on 7 MHz. Output power is around 5 watts. The crystal oscillator is a BD139 and the IRF510 forms the power amplifier. I've now built another version. Still two transistor but with more power output. The circuit is pretty much the same. The difference is that instead of feeding 12 volts to the power amplifier I'm feeding around 30 volts. That lifts the output power to around 20 watts. I'm still crystal controlled but the 20 watts does give a signal quite a bit stronger than 5 watts under marginal conditions and at little more than 1 S unit below 100 watts 20 watts will give you a strong signal attractive for people to reply when you're calling CQ and that's an important factor because this transmitter is crystal controlled most contacts you get will come from you calling CQ and people finding you rather than you finding them on their frequency. As I've said before frequency agility is king but if the frequency is clear and you've got a strong signal you can still have success with crystal control. Here's the circuit. I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit clearer. This is the crystal oscillator using the BD139. In the collector circuit is a 10 microhenry RF choke. The keying is in the emitter circuit. Pressing the key shorts the emitter to earth and enables the transistor to operate. This oscillator will operate on multiple HF bands if you've got crystals for the right frequency. If you were to pick one band I would go for 7 MHz. Here on the right is the power amplifier. I've used either an IRF510 or IRF530. What you see here in the centre of the picture is the 4 to 1 output transformer. It's round on a ferrite toroid FT50-43. The wires for it can be salvaged from an old transformer you need enamelled copper wire. You take two lengths, you need about let's say 30 centimeters per length and you twist them together using maybe a hand drill that will be okay you hold the other end in with pliers you have about two twists per centimeter then you wind 10 turns through the middle of the FT50-43 toroid and then with the multimeter you work out where the ends of each wires are. The end of one wire goes to the start of another and that junction goes to the drain of the IRF510 or IRF530 FET. You solder that up and then the two remaining ends that are just single wires, one goes to the power rail and the other to the antenna via the 100 nanofarad capacitor and the Pi section low pass filter. As far as powering the transmitter goes, the dotted line you see is only connected if you want to operate exclusively from 12 volts. That will give you about 5 watts output power. Or if you want more power, then you have 12 volts going to the oscillator as you can see here and 30 volts just going to the drain of the power amplifier that will give you around 20 watts output there's lots more things you could add for instance you want to have some switching possibly if you're using a separate receiver that's at the antenna socket end or if you're just using a web controlled receiver preferably one in your neighborhood 
as you want to be hearing signals at a similar strength to what you would hear at home, then you could just connect this rig straight to the antenna. Add a supplementary low pass filter if you want to get better suppression of higher harmonics. What if you want to get the higher power but only have a 12 volt battery? One solution is a DC to DC converter. This is one that I bought from eBay. With 12 volts going in you can get about 30 volts out. I think it's about 2 or 3 amps which would be suitable for this transmitter project. Anyway you can see the wires off to the right. One of them plugs into the 12 volt battery. The other connects to the 30 volts input on the transmitter and the other goes to the 12 volts input on the transmitter just for the oscillator section. You can see these connections on the back panel where I've also labelled where you bridge the connections if you're only using 12 volts. This is a low pass filter. This one's for 7 megahertz. I've got it on the back panel with banana connections. That's so if I want to operate this rig on another band then I can unplug the low pass filter and put in another. Here's a look inside. This is a rotary switch which I've soldered several crystals. Some on 7 MHz, some on 10 MHz. I initially did have crystals for 14 MHz there as well. And although I could get sufficient RF output power, the chirp on keying was not really acceptable. That is one liability with very simple transmitters. It's a bit of a trade-off between output power, frequency pulling range and chirp. If you try to achieve too much, then the chirp becomes unacceptable. This is the transmit receive switch that flips the antenna socket between the output filter, the Pi network on transmit and the socket to plug in a receiver just here. This is the main printed circuit board very few parts, I'll give you a closer up later on. And here's the three banana sockets that are for the plug-in Pi network. The middle one is earthed, this one is input, the other one is output. In terms of getting crystals, the common ones that you see on eBay are on 7023. They're quite often used with the little pixie transceiver kits. You can use one of those in here. For US viewers though, if you are a general or a tech then you need crystals on other frequencies as they will be within your allocated bands. Anyway, there are some specialist QRP crystal suppliers so have a look on eBay or elsewhere online and you should be able to get a set of crystals on some popular QRP and CW frequencies. If you can get several frequencies on each band that will give you a choice so that if there's QRM on one channel then you can switch to another. Uh, and it's important to have a clear spot when you are calling CQ. I mentioned in the circuit the FT50-43 toid. Here is how I've actually done it. I've got two. They're just on top of each other and this is the 4 to 1 in the drain circuit of the FET power amplifier. Right here is the BD139, that's the oscillator transistor, and mounted on the heatsink to the right is the IRF510 or IRF530. It's very important to note that the metal tab on these transistors is connected to drain, and that will be at 30 volts potential. The heatsink is earthed, so if you want to avoid arcs and sparks, then you need good insulation between the two. You can see the white washer just under the screw head, and then there's some backing. Uh, it conducts heat, but electrically it's an insulator, 
between the FET and the metal heat sink. So that's the circuitry. Surprisingly, very few components. In fact, on a component to what basis, this transmitter would be almost unbeatable for the amount of power you get for so few parts. It's really the modern version of the crystal oscillator power amplifier two tube transmitter that was popular from the mid 1930s. There were also popular projects later on, particularly in the United States, where their novice license only permitted crystal control. So you would commonly have one tube for the oscillator, another for the power amplifier, and you might get around 40 or 50 watts DC input, which was within the then novice power limit in the United States. The great thing about this rig is it produces almost as much power but can be built in much less time due to less considerations with the chassis construction and if you buy your DC to DC inverter pre-built the power supply construction as well. Now we're hooked up we've got the transmitter the DC to DC converter, low pass filter, and a 7 amp hour gel battery. Press the key and goes up to 20 watts. This is the VK5 ARG Kiwi SDR. It's in a low noise country location, about six or 700 kilometers from here. It's the middle of the day, just before noon, and I'll put out some CQ calls and see if I get a response. I haven't publicized this activity on any social media, so the amount of time you wait may be typical of what you might expect if you're just calling CQ. Well that was a contact with ZL2AP, very unusual to be working that distance 
around 2600 kilometers right in the middle of the day just gone noon here and 2 p.m. over there admittedly though I was cheating I was using the VK5 ARG SDR although that's even further from New Zealand a distance of around 3000 kilometers though its quiet location more than compensates for the extra distance as I wouldn't have been able to hear NZ from here. Still, Joe must have had a quiet receiving location as he got me at 559. We're using a mix of old and new technology, looking up the reverse beacon and both VK4CT and VK2GL can detect me at quite reasonable signal strengths. Anyway, I'll keep going and put out some more calls and see what else I can get. Three contacts were made in a little over half an hour on 7 MHz. The contact with New Zealand was particularly unusual for the time of day. As you heard, there was a bit of chirp, making it sound like a classic valve homebrew transmitter. Still, its extent was not enough to compromise readability. In terms of signal strength per component, a two transistor CW transmitter using a high power FET is quite a fun project. You've seen the circuit, now put one together. I'd suggest first of all trying 12 volts and if you don't blow up the IRF510 going up to a higher voltage to see how much output power you can get. <laughs> 